Christians and other Bible scholars often use some or all of these 12 points to make the argument that the rapture cannot happen yet. Number one, they say the gospel must be preached in every town of the whole earth, and it hasn't. Number two, they're waiting for Jerusalem to be surrounded by armies. Number three, they're waiting for the final beast or revived Roman Empire to devour the whole earth. Number four, they say the falling away has not occurred yet. Number five, they're waiting for a third temple to be rebuilt so a man can sit in it and proclaim himself God. Number six, they're waiting for the abomination of desolation to be set up in that temple. Number seven, they say the great tribulation has not started yet and must come to an end before the rapture occurs. Number eight, they believe the king of the north has not yet set up his tabernacle between the seas. Number nine, they're waiting for a seven-year peace treaty with Israel. Number ten, they're waiting for an antichrist to rise up. Number 11, they say the seven seals must be broken prior to the rapture and none have been broken yet. And number 12, they believe the scattering of the power of the holy people has not occurred yet. In this video, I will prove using Bible scripture that all 12 of these points have already been fulfilled completely. Number 1. In Matthew 24, 14, Jesus said the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world and then the end will come. Many Christians argue that this has not happened yet because there are still small communities in remote parts of the world that do not contain Christians. Other groups such as the Joshua Project imply that the acceptance and domination of Christianity must occur in every region of the world. However, that's not what Jesus said. He said the gospel will be preached in all the world. Never did he mention Christianity, and never did he mention acceptance or domination. If he meant that it would be accepted and dominate every single community of the world, he would have said that, but he didn't. He also did not say that it would be preached in every village of the world. He said it would be preached in all the world, and this has happened. Even in the countries where it's illegal to be Christian, it has occurred. If the gospel had not been preached in those areas, then there would be no laws against it. Also notice Jesus did not say the gospel has to be preached by people alive today. The gospel itself is not Christianity. It's certain books within the Bible itself. That means the preaching or teaching occurs within the books themselves. So the preaching of the gospel is not only found in religious organizations, there are many people studying these books independently and thus learning or being preached or taught by the books themselves. Therefore, wherever the Bible has been published is sufficient evidence that the gospel has reached that area. This chart shows how many different languages the Bible has been translated into, 641 languages in Africa, 570 in Asia, 405 in the Pacific Islands, 203 in Europe, 73 in North America, and 392 in Central and South America. This shows that the gospel has been published in all populated regions of the earth, all of the inhabited continents. Even if one were to argue that it must be published in every language, the Denver Post recently pointed out that this may be complete in just a few years. But again, Jesus did not say, the gospel must reach every language of the earth, just like he did not say it must reach every single community of the earth, just all the earth, the whole earth. And I think it's obvious that has happened. Every major area of the earth has been reached. Not every place has accepted the gospel or converted to Christianity, but number one is complete. The gospel has reached the whole world. Number two, in Luke 21 20, it says, And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Luke 21 runs parallel to Matthew 24 and Mark 13. All three of these chapters give a timeline of events. However, each differs slightly. Jesus said in Luke 12, 37 and 38 that there will be three watches and that we will not know which watch he will come in, the first, the second, or the third. In Matthew 24, Jesus lists three things that watchers should see. First, in verses 1 and 2, he said they will see the Jerusalem temple be destroyed. 
Next, in verse 15, he says they will see the abomination of desolation. And third, in verse 30, he says everyone will see the coming of the Son of Man in the clouds. Mark 13 lists these same three events to specifically watch for, things Jesus specifically says to see. But you'll notice a slight difference in Luke 21. Luke 21, 20 says to watch for Jerusalem compassed with armies instead of the abomination of desolation that both Mark 13 and Matthew 24 say to watch for. And this is because Luke 21 is specifically talking about the first watch. Luke 21 does not list three things to see because it's not talking about three watches it's only talking about one watch, the first watch. And this can be verified by the writings of Josephus, which describe in detail the events that occurred when Jerusalem was surrounded by the Roman armies in 70 CE. The events he described are perfectly replicated in Luke 21. And in Luke 21 20, it makes clear that it's referring to the destruction of Jerusalem. Therefore, Luke 21 is not referring to the final watch. It refers to the first watch, which was the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 CE. That is when Jerusalem was surrounded by armies. So it's not necessary for this to happen again. It happened at the first watch. So number two is complete. Jerusalem was surrounded by armies in 70 CE during the first watch. For more information on that, see the link here or the playlist at the end of this video. Number three, in Daniel 7 verses 7 and 23, it describes the final beast that will devour the whole earth. This beast is described in more detail in Revelation 13, 1 and 2. It's like a leopard, has the feet of a bear, and the mouth of a lion. This means it's a combination of the first three beasts in Daniel 7. The first three beasts are well known to be the ancient Babylonian Empire, the first Persian Empire, and the Greek Empire. The fourth beast is well known to be the Roman Empire. Revelation 13.3 tells us one of the seven heads of the beast will be wounded as if it were dead, but then be healed. This wounding occurred with the dissolution of the Holy Roman Empire in 1870. It appeared that the Roman Empire was dead at that point, however, it rose again in 1920 in the name of peace. There are several reasons we know the League of Nations and the United Nations are the final beast. First, Revelation 17, 8-10 puts forth a riddle. The beast that you saw was and is not. The seven heads are seven mountains, and there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goes into perdition. The five that had fallen were the Babylonian Empire, the Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, the Western Roman Empire, and the Eastern Roman Empire. The one that is, it already told us, was, is not, yet is. In other words, the one that is refers to the head that was wounded and then healed. That was the sixth king, the Holy Roman Empire. Remember, the kings are not the same as the heads. They're slightly different in this verse. The Holy Roman Empire was the seventh head, but the sixth king. The one that had not yet come at the time of the Holy Roman Empire was the League of Nations, which only existed a short time, 25 years. That was the seventh king. And the eighth king is the United Nations, which is the same as the seventh king, it says. The United Nations was the renewed League of Nations. So the seventh and eighth kings are the same organization, as it says. The other reason we know this is in Daniel 8, 23 through 25, we're told the king of fierce countenance will rise when the transgressions of the four horns of the goat have come to the full. The four horns of the goat correspond to the four heads of the leopard. The four heads of the leopard all corresponded to major empires at different times in history. The Seleucid Empire corresponded to the ancient Neo-Assyrian Empire, Mesopotamia. That was when it reached its full potential. The Ptolemaic Dynasty corresponded to the ancient Egyptian Empire, its full potential. 
and Macedonia reached its full potential as the ancient Greek Empire. The only empire that did not reach its full potential by Daniel's time was Anatolia, which corresponds to the modern country of Turkey. This area reached its full potential as the Turkish Empire, and it came to its end in 1923. Daniel 8, 23-25 says, In the latter time of their kingdom, a king of fierce countenance will stand up, and by peace shall destroy many. The League of Nations rose up in 1920 at the latter end of the Turkish Empire, and it rose by the stated motive of maintaining peace. The League of Nations only existed a short time until the United Nations took over. The United Nations is, therefore, the eighth king, the final beast, which the prophecy tells us is a combination of all of Daniel's beasts. The United Nations does, in fact, include the nations associated with Daniel's first three beasts, but it does more than that. It includes every country on the planet except four. It literally has devoured the whole earth. In 1968, the same politicians and United Nations bureaucrats founded the Club of Rome. In 1972, the Club of Rome, as a UN subsidiary, published Limits to Growth, which eventually distinguished 10 world regions. What's more, in 1991, the Club of Rome published the first global revolution, which alarmingly states that humanity is their enemy. In 2009, they published A New Path for World Development, which further accentuated the 10 world regions published earlier in 1972. These 10 regions are the 10 kings, and the year of their publishing, 2009, also included a major fulfillment of Daniel 9, which we'll talk about later. So, the final beast, the king of fierce countenance, has already risen, and the 10 kings have been appointed. But there have also now been a total of 10 kings since the start of Daniel's timeline. Number 1, Babylon. Number 2, Persia. Number 3, Assyria. 4, Greece. 5, Egypt. 6, Turkey. 7, 8, and 9, the Western, Eastern, and Holy Roman Empires. And number 10, the final king, the United Nations. So, number 3 has been fulfilled. The beast, which Revelation 13 tells us includes all the kings since Babylon, has already risen, devoured the whole world, and has all ten of its horns as of now. Numbers 4 and 5 concern 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 4, which says that concerning the coming of Jesus, let no man deceive you, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Then notice in verse 7, it adds that this mystery of iniquity does already work. In other words, when 2 Thessalonians was written around 51 to 52 CE, the iniquity spoken of in these verses had already started. Then it adds in verses 10 through 12 that after this man of sin declares himself God, there will be a strong delusion and many will be deceived. So here's the timeline. Second Thessalonians tells us the iniquity had already started in 51 to 52 CE. That was at the first rising of the Roman Empire. By 1512, the popes were already being called gods. Notice the word translated as temple in 2 Thessalonians 2.4, word number 3485, means any heathen temple or shrine. The Vatican temple was built from 1506 to 1626. In 1517, the falling away began with the Protestant Reformation. Then in 1894, Pope Leo XIII proclaimed himself God while sitting in the completed temple. The strong delusion is the church system stemming out of the Holy Roman Empire, the seventh head of the beast and the sixth king of Revelation 17. Click on the link here or the playlist at the end of this video for more details on that. So number four is complete. The falling away has already occurred. The temple in 2 Thessalonians refers to any heathen temple or shrine, which applies to the Vatican temple. 
But in Ezekiel 40 through 43, there are measurements for another temple that many believe will be built in Jerusalem before the tribulation. However, the Ezekiel temple is a temple built by God, the temple in Revelation 21. In Ezekiel 45.1, it says waters will rush forth out of the temple. In Revelation 21.1 and 2, we're told that after Armageddon, there will be no sea on the earth, and the holy city will come down out of heaven. Then it gives the measurements of the holy city, and in verse 17, it says the wall is 144 cubits. In Ezekiel 43.16, the altar is measured as 12 by 12 cubits, which equals 144 cubits. In Ezekiel 48, 29 through 35, it actually says this temple is a city and it has 12 gates named after the 12 tribes of Israel. In Revelation 21, 10 through 13, it says the holy city that will come down from heaven in the end has 12 gates named after the 12 tribes of Israel. So it seems clear by comparison of these verses that the temple in Ezekiel is not a man built temple but a temple built by God that will come down to earth after Armageddon. This is also confirmed in Hebrews 8.2, which says that the true tabernacle is built by God, not humans. So the Ezekiel temple is not the temple that the man of sin sat in. The Ezekiel temple is a temple built by God that comes down out of heaven after Armageddon. And the temple in 2 Thessalonians 2.4 is any heathen temple or shrine. The word translated as God in that verse is the Greek word theos, which literally means, number one, a god or goddess, and number four, whatever can in any respect be likened to God. For example, God's representative, it says. So the second half of verse four reads, so that he as God's representative sits in the temple of a god, showing himself that he is God's representative. So, Numbers 4 and 5 have already happened. The falling away started over 500 years ago, and the man of sin has already sat in the temple and declared himself God's representative. The strong delusion that came after that involves the false belief that the timeline looks like this, or this, or this. All of these have been proven invalid, in the playlist linked here or at the end of this video. Number six. In Matthew 24, 15 and 16, it says, When you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, stand in the holy place, then those in Judea will flee into the mountains. And verse 21, For then shall be great tribulation. This abomination of desolation is spoken of in detail in Daniel chapters 11 and 12. In Daniel 11.31, it says that arms will stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that makes desolate. Daniel 11 is a very detailed timeline of events. In order for verse 31 to truly be fulfilled, it has to match the timeline in that chapter exactly. This timeline ends in 685 CE when the Dome of the Rock was built on the Temple Mount. The Dome of the Rock was built using the same measurements as the Catholic Church of the Holy Sepulchre. It's a Roman temple. Daniel 11 explains how the Roman Empire created the Muslim religion in order to conquer Persia. This is explained in detail at the link here or in the playlist at the end of this video. The other part concerning the abomination of desolation is found in Daniel 12, verses 11 and 12, the 1290 days and the 1335 days. Days can also represent years in the prophecy, and this fulfillment occurred in years. The 1290 years from the first ceasing of the daily in 606 BC until 685 CE when the Dome of the Rock was set up in Jerusalem. Then 1335 years from 685 lands in the year 2020. So number six has been completed. The abomination of desolation was set up in Jerusalem in 685 CE. Notice neither Jesus nor Daniel said it would be set up in a temple. It does not say that in Daniel 11 or 12, and it does not say that in Matthew 24:15. It says it would be set up in a holy place 
and Jerusalem was the holy place. The abominations in Daniel 9 are something different, which we'll get to later. Number 7. The Great Tribulation is the Tribulation of Days, as explained in Matthew 24:29. This Tribulation of Days refers to the 1260 days in Revelation 11 and 12. Revelation 12:6 tells us the woman fled into the wilderness for 1260 days. This woman refers to Judea in Matthew 24:16. Matthew 24 tells us the abomination stands before this fleeing, and Revelation 12 tells us the sign in heaven appears before this fleeing. The sign occurred in 686 CE while the Dome of the Rock was being built. For more on that, see the link here or in the playlist at the end of this video. This 1260 day period is a 1260 year period since days refer to years in Ezekiel 4.6 and Numbers 14.34. In Revelation 12, we're told the rain of fire and brimstone will not fall during this time. This is because Matthew 24.29 tells us the stars will fall immediately after the tribulation of the days. Waters represent people according to Revelation 17.15, so the waters turn to blood because many people were murdered during this 1260 year period. This is also the time when the two witnesses walk the great city. The great city, according to Revelation 17:18, is Babylon the Great. The two witnesses are the two candlesticks, in other words, two churches walking Babylon the Great. They are Christianity and Judaism. For more on that, see the video linked here or in the playlist at the end of this video. The 1260 years of tribulation has also involved the murder and persecution of those who will not worship the beast. The Great Tribulation started, according to ancient scholars, between 754 and 758 CE. This is when the Holy Roman Empire began to grow. The end of this tribulation, therefore, is literally about to happen now. Revelation 24:29 says the stars fall immediately after the tribulation and that starts the final time of trouble of three and a half years according to Revelation 11 and 12. The rapture occurs when the stars fall. This means the rapture occurs immediately after the 1260 years at the start of the final three and a half years of darkness. This is the flying of the woman in Revelation 12:14. The woman at this point represents the great multitude of all tribes and nations in Revelation 7:9. They are the multitude walking the holy city for 42 months in Revelation 11:2. The word translated as Gentiles there also means multitude. This 42 months is the three and a half years the final time of trouble after the tribulation of the days. So number seven has been fulfilled. The great tribulation of the days started 1260 years ago and is ending now. Number eight, the timeline in Daniel 11 continues after the abomination of desolation is set up in verse 31. Verses 32 through 35 refer to Justinian II and Pope John V. Verses 36 through 39 refer to Pope Stephen II and the donation of Pepin, and verses 40 through 45 refer to the discovery of America, the subsequent invasion by the Holy Roman Empire, and the placement of the Vatican Temple in the United States between the two seas, the Atlantic and Pacific. So number eight was fulfilled in 1866. For more details on that, see the link here or in the playlist at the end of this video. Number 9. Daniel 9.27 says, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate. The word translated as week literally means seven. So what many, if not most Christians, believe is that the Antichrist will make a seven-year peace treaty with Israel and then three and a half years later break the treaty. However, the verse does not say that. First of all, there is no mention of the little horn in these verses. 
Second, Daniel 9 does not talk about a specific placing of one abomination. It talks about many abominations. Third, it does not say the covenant is a peace covenant. And fourth, it does not say the covenant is with Israel. So, while we do know that the king of fierce countenance in Daniel 8, 23-25 will destroy by peace, it does not say in Daniel 9, 27 that the covenant is a peace covenant with Israel. It says it is a covenant with many. As it turned out, when these fulfillments happened, the covenant was a treaty between the king of fierce countenance and the whole world. The man called Messiah was Obama, who won the World Peace Prize for confirming that covenant in 2009. But after Obama was cut off, the prince that shall come, President Trump, also confirmed the covenant along with every other president in the past 50 years. The covenant is the worldwide treaty on the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons, otherwise known as the Non-Proliferation Treaty, or NPT. This is a treaty put forth by the final beast, the United Nations, a treaty with many, a treaty with almost every country on the planet. The Daniel 9 prophecy is very complex, and for details on the recent fulfillments, you can see this link here or in the playlist at the end of the video. In short, everything in verses 24 through 27 have been completed except the flood, the end, the battle, the gift on the wing, and the end of sins. This is an alternate translation. The meanings of the words have been shown in other videos and I've highlighted in red those things that have not occurred yet. The yellow highlights the 77 that are determined to make an end of sins from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem. And this started in 1947 through 48 at the UN Commandment and Declaration of Israel. So the 77, it indicates, will end in 2024 or 2025. Highlighted in blue is the appearance of the man called Messiah, the 7, 7, and 62 Shavuots from 1948, 1961, birth of Obama, and 2009, first year as president. After this, it says Messiah was cut off. That happened in 2016. The next part says, leader come in, perhaps to go to ruin. This occurred when Trump took office in 2017. The red part is what has not occurred yet. City, sacredness, end, flood, end, battle, desolated, cut. Strong covenant, many, one seven, half seven cease, sacrifice, gift on the wing, detested thing, desolated, even complete, cut, pour forth, desolated. Not a single word has been omitted or inserted here. This is literally what the ancient words say in these verses. The strong covenant with many is already in effect. It has been in effect since 1968 between the final beast and the whole world. So number nine, the covenant with many has been fulfilled. Number 10, what people call the Antichrist actually refers to the little horn described by Daniel. There are at least 17 points concerning the little horn, so we'll go through these quickly. Daniel 7 verses 8 and 20 tell us the little horn comes out of the beast and rises among the ten horns of the beast. The word translated as after in Daniel 7.24 also means in the future, and the word them is not in the lexicon. So the little horn doesn't have to rise after the ten horns. It's simply saying it will rise in the future, and it's different from the ten horns. Whether the ten horns are the ten regions of the world put forth by the United Nations, or whether they are all the kings since Babylon, the little country of Israel came out of them. It was the eighth king, the beast, who created the country of Israel. The United Nations put forth the commandment in November 1947 and Israel is different from the ten horns. It is a country, and the ten horns are not countries, but instead are regions designated by the beast. In Daniel 7 verse 8, it says, In the little horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. But notice the little horn does not have a face. Contrary to popular belief, the little horn is not a man. It has the eyes and the mouth of humans, but it is not a human. 
Zechariah 4, 2 through 10 and Revelation 1, 20 tell us that the eyes are the churches of Yahweh throughout the whole earth. And Revelation 13, 2 tells us the mouth is the lion, which Daniel 7 explains is Babylon. Hosea 13 and Revelation 13 tell us that Yahweh is the beast. The beast is both Yahweh and the world government because Deuteronomy 32 tells us the government created Yahweh. Yahweh is the name that the mouth, Babylon, published and ascribed to Yahweh the greatness of the Elohim who created the earth in Genesis 1. So the beast and Yahweh are one and the same according to the Bible. The government tried to make itself God long ago at the start of Daniel's timeline, but they didn't admit that until the 1800s. Even now, those who worship Yahweh are worshiping the Lord the government created. It's not the true God, it is the beast according to the Bible itself. And this worship is the great delusion, the belief that Yahweh is God, despite the superior evidence in the Bible telling us that Yahweh is, in fact, the beast. In Revelation 17.3, we're told Babylon, the mouth, sits on the beast, and Revelation 17.15 says Babylon also sits on people. If it sits on the beast, and it also sits on people, then it is sitting on the people of the beast. In other words, Babylon sits on the people who worship the beast. The beast is Yahweh, so Babylon sits on the people who worship Yahweh, the Abrahamic religions highlighted in pink on this map. The beast devours the whole world. Babylon sits on the beast, so Babylon sits on the whole world, all seven continents. The eyes of the beast are the churches of Yahweh throughout the earth, and the mouth of the beast is Babylon, who sits on the churches of Yahweh throughout the earth. The little horn is part of the beast. Therefore, the eyes and mouth of the beast are the eyes and mouth of the little horn. The little horn is the little country of Israel that was created by the beast 70 years ago. Therefore, the eyes and mouth of Israel are the churches of Yahweh throughout the whole earth. Jesus told us true Israel represents the whole earth. So the country in the Middle East is not true Israel. It's the little horn of the beast. Daniel 7, 8, and 24 also say there will be three kings that are plucked up before the little horn. These three kings were France, Britain, and Russia, who moved in and occupied the Middle East toward the end of the Turkish Empire, with the area around Jerusalem taken by the League of Nations. The League of Nations then transformed into the United Nations and created the country of Israel, which pushed Britain out of that region in 1948, along with France and Russia. Daniel 7.25 says the little horn will change the times and the laws and have the saints in its hand for a time, times, and half a time. This can refer to three and a half years, but it can also refer to 70 years, one time being 20 years, times being 40, and half a time being 10 years. If this is true, then this time period may refer to the 70-year period beginning in 1947-48, but it also may refer to the final three and a half years, the final time of trouble after the asteroid impact. Daniel 8, 8 and 9 says the little horn will come out of the four horns of the goat. The four horns of the goat are the four heads of the leopard, the fourth being the Turkish Empire, which was taken over in the Middle East by three kings at its end, and then those three were pushed out when the United Nations created Israel. Daniel 8.11 tells us the daily will be taken away by the little horn. This connects to Daniel 12.11 and 12. The abomination of desolation was placed in 685 CE according to both Daniel 11 and 12. However, there was another fulfillment of those scriptures in 2012. The key in understanding this one is in the actual definitions of the words themselves. The word translated as daily, number 8548, also means continual employment. Employment that is continual would be called a job or position in our modern society. The word translated as taken away, number 5493, also means depose, which means to take an oath. 
So it's saying that from the time the position shall be taken oath until the abomination of desolation is set up shall be 1290 days. This was fulfilled exactly from the day the man called Messiah took oath on January 20th, 2009. This was a secondary fulfillment of Daniel 12, but this fulfillment gave us a very important clue about Daniel 8:11, which says that the daily will be taken away by the little horn. Now that we know the end time daily is the position of the President of the United States, and the deposing of that daily is the taking of the oath of the President of the United States, then this verse is telling us that by the little horn, the presidency of the United States will be taken oath. Since the little horn is the horn of the United Nations, then it seems clear that Daniel 8.11 is telling us the United Nations has usurped the presidency of the United States. Not only is the UN headquarters in the United States, but it also seems to be running the country at this point, which it was able to achieve by the use of its little horn, Israel. Verse 12 adds to that, A host, in other words, an army, will be given to him by reason of transgression. This has already proven true. Not only is the United States providing Israel an army with weapons, but the United Nations has an army in the United States. That is what this is saying. The army, however, does not come into its full force until after the asteroid hits. This is explained in the next part of Daniel 8, verses 13 and 14, which talks about the 2300 days. It says, concerning the daily, in other words, concerning the position of the presidency, the sanctuary will be trodden down for 2300 days, which is also translated as 2300 evenings and mornings. The word translated as sanctuary, number 6944, means hallowed things. So the hallowed things, it says, will be trodden down for 2300 evenings and mornings. Those 2300 evenings and mornings correspond to 1150 complete days, which is roughly three years. So the 2300 days of the trotting down of the hallowed things in the United States will last roughly three years, and that corresponds to the final time of trouble. This connects back to the location of the asteroid impact. The seat of the beast will be in darkness, it says, in Revelation 16.10. The beast is the United Nations, and its seat, or headquarters, is in New York City. Therefore, this is telling us that New York City will be dark during the pouring out of the fifth vial. The seven vials, or plagues, occur simultaneously with the seven trumpets in not only one day, but in one hour, as explained in Revelation 18, 8 through 10. It refers to the asteroid impact. So it appears the prophecy is telling us the asteroid will hit not only the Atlantic Ocean, but also somewhere in the United States, and afterward the United Nations will take over for three and a half years. So both the beast and the little horn Yahweh and Israel are literally being worshipped throughout the world right now. In addition to Yahweh, many are also worshipping the United Nations. But the prophecy tells us they are one and the same entity, the beast. The little horn is what many call the Antichrist. But the little horn is not a man, it is a king, which Daniel tells us is a country. So number 10 has been fulfilled. The beast created the little horn 70 years ago. For more on this, click on the link here or the playlist at the end of this video. Number 11. Revelation 6 through 8 describes seven seals that will be broken, and the final seal obviously describes the final event, which is a star that falls from heaven. In short, the first seal was broken in 312 CE when Constantine began conquering using the symbol of the cross. This event is memorialized in the Vatican Temple itself, with Constantine displayed on a white horse. That was the beginning of the religious empire that still reigns today as Babylon the Great. Seal 2 was broken in 1914 with World Wars 1 and 2, the Red Horse of War. Seal 3, the Black Horse, Financial Collapse, was broken in 1929 at the Worldwide Great Depression. And Seal 4, the Pale Horse, 
death in one-fourth of the earth started in 1948 when war broke out in the Middle East because of the occupation of the Little Horn and also when disease and starvation started to ravage Africa. Seals 5, 6, and 7 occur in close proximity to each other. Seal 5 is the multitude standing in heaven in white robes, resting. This is the escape of the bride that occurs at the end of the 1260 years and at the start of the final three and a half years. It occurs at the asteroid. And seals 6 and 7, the wrath and the hail when the sun and moon go dark, will be broken at the asteroid impact as well and last for three and a half years during the final time of trouble. So number 11 has been fulfilled. Seals 1 through 4 have already been broken, and seals 5 through 7 will be broken at the escape, otherwise known as the rapture, when the asteroid hits. Number 12. In Daniel 12, it talks about the tribulation, and it says in verse 7, that when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. The word translated as power is 3027, which also means strength. The word translated as holy is 6944, which also means set apartness. So it's saying that someone will scatter the strength of the set apart people. It doesn't clarify who exactly the set apart people are in this verse, but Jesus said in Matthew 25, 31 through 33, that when the Son of Man comes, the nations will be separated into two groups represented as sheep and goats. These two groups are also represented as the blessed and the woed, partially explained in Luke 6, 20-26. And notice verse 22 says that the blessed will be separated from the company of some people. The blessed represent the sheep, so this means the sheep will be separated from the company of the goats. These two groups are also represented as wheat and tares in Matthew 13, 24-30, and verse 30 clarifies when the separation will occur. It says, In the time of harvest, the tares will first be bound together in bundles in order to be burned. They're not burned first, they are bound together in bundles first. The burning is the asteroid impact. It's the final time of trouble. The tares go through that time of trouble because they do not escape. Luke 17, 29 through 37 explains this. It says, In the day the Son of Man is revealed, when it rains fire and brimstone from heaven, in that day or night, depending where one is at that time, one will be taken and the other left. The ones taken are the blessed, and this is clear in Revelation 8. The three woes occur during the seventh seal when the seven trumpets sound. In other videos, we looked at how we know the seven trumpets sound simultaneously. They sound at the falling of the asteroid. And in verse 13, it says, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. The three woes represent the three years of darkness that the tares go through. Revelation 9, 1-12 explains that the first woe is the asteroid impact. Revelation 12.12 12 also confirms that those in heaven will be rejoicing and the woad will be on the earth when the dragon is on the earth. The Revelation 12 timeline is explained in more detail in the link here or at the end of this video. But in short, the dragon fell to earth between 1945 and 1947 and that is when the short time began. The woman in verse 14 is the multitude that is being persecuted now. They are the ones that will fly to safety when the asteroid hits. At that point, those left behind will be hunted by the dragon. That is why Revelation 12 says woe to them. They are the woad. In other words, they are the tares. Revelation 12 confirms they are the remnant who have the testimony, which Revelation 11 confirms are the two witnesses, the Christians and Jews. Not all, but most as stated by Jesus in Matthew 22, 1-14. The wheat escape at the asteroid and the tares are left behind. So in Matthew 13, 30, where it says the tares will be gathered first and bound in bundles, it's talking about a time period prior to the asteroid, because the burning is the asteroid impact. That's explained in Daniel 2, 34 and 35, and Daniel 7, 8-11. The stone will break the feet 
and the burning flame will destroy the final beast. This is the burning stone, which is a burning star that will fall from heaven. The asteroid impact will burn the beast and those who worship the beast. However, Revelation 13, 4 and 5 tell us that the beast is given 42 months to continue before it is completely destroyed. That's the final three and a half years. So the burning of the tares is the burning of Babylon the Great at the asteroid impact and the final three and a half year period where they will be hunted by the dragon and the beast. But prior to the asteroid, the tares are being bound together in bundles and they are separating the wheat from their company. So it is the wheat that are separated right now. They are the set apart people who are scattered in Daniel 12, 7. They're set apart because they are not bound together in bundles. They are the woman in Revelation 12:14 who is being persecuted now. They are the multitude of all tribes and nations that will escape at the asteroid impact. Number 12 has been fulfilled. The strength of the wheat has already been scattered. There are people all over the world going through the persecution and separation right now. It's not one nation or country that goes through this. Revelation 7-9 says it is a multitude of all nations and languages. It is people all over the world scattered among the tares. So hopefully you can see that all 12 of these points have been fulfilled. The only event left for the multitude is the escape. And for the remnant, it is the asteroid and subsequent three and a half years of darkness. For more information on any of this, please see the playlist linked here. Thank you so much to those who make this work possible. If you liked this video, please consider providing support using the link below. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you later.